now we are second with one point behind and uh, I hope we will, uh, we, will, we will turn that before end for the season to try to, to be first and uh, take the champion. I hope that. He's a very, very good team player, good personality and he's at his best in the important matches. Uh, like in the most high profile matches when the pressure is big, then he's performing very well. And we, we knew this when we brought him and uh, you can see it happening in the last six months. He's the most consistent player of our team. It's like a serial. <clears throat> but uh, it's different. It's different. I like it. You know? What you don't bring? You forget every day. You forget. Every, no, no, no. Every day. No, no, no. Every day. Every day. You say you forget. You never buy, eh? Uh, next time it's my turn. Next time, yeah. Okay, thank you. You know, you have a short pocket and big hand, yeah. Every day you say, eh, tomorrow I bring, I bring tomorrow I bring tomorrow. Now you, know, you are sitting there waiting for you know. Good for your milk, you see. Thank you. Toda, Shiri. Toda, Toda. 24 years, very good player, defender, you know, but uh, sometimes you cry, you know. <laughs> he has great character, he's great in the dressing room, he connects the team, he's, he's a real leader, he's someone that the other players look to, to see what he's saying, he, is, he has very, very good character, he's a clever, clever guy, hard worker, uh, I think he's, in terms of personality, superb. This is my best friend, Bueno. Bueno, come. This is a, this is a man who, you know, had the, all the equipment. You see, Bueno, Eli Bueno. <laughs> so when I traveled back to, to my country, he gave me some, you know, some stuff for friends there, for people there, for kids. So, it's like my best friend here, yeah, you know. I remember that time when I was uh, very, very young, you know, 9, 11, 10 years, playing in the street with all my friends, you know, without shoes, many, many injuries. And uh, in the night when you, when you need to come back home, you are afraid because your dad, he will give you a good punch. Because for all day, you just keeping playing football in the street and uh, the car, they are driving everywhere. You can, you know, you can lose your life, but uh, I remember all that time and uh, today, you know, when I, I see everything I got from God, I just say thank you for him. Football is a main sport, is the biggest one in Africa. And I think one of the biggest in the world. And you know, the, everybody there in Cameroon, especially, they are dreaming to be like a, a big, football player, a big star, you know, scoring many goals. And, uh, you know, that's why there you can see everywhere in all Africa, you can see in the street, kids, they are playing football everywhere. I remember that time, I want more. I want to be a football player because uh, people, they was telling my father, my mom, now she dead, she are not there telling them, oh, your you son have this, your son have that, this trick, he can be a, a good footballer, you know. And uh, but, my fa but my father, he was like, uh, you know, going to the school, going to the school, going to the school. But in fact, I did it. My dream come true. You need to have a little bit of luck because we are too many. We are too many in this world want to play football. And everybody cannot be a football player, you know. To be fair, my first jersey, my first shirt, my dad, he bought me, he was uh, number seven, Eric Cantona. I remember that time. 
red shirt with sharp hair. Yeah. yeah, it was that. And uh, in Cameroon, everybody called me Cantona because uh, from, from my nickname, you know, Eric. So everybody called me Cantona. Every door you pass here, if you are Jewish, Jewish religion, every door you pass, in every door, you have this. You need to touch it. It's like a lock. You can see, look. You can see where they go out. This is the first. You see? You know? Some people, they are they touch. Him, you, him, you not touch because it's Arab. Him is Arab. So you cannot touch. But you can see. So when they go out, they just... It's like a lock, you know. And when they come in, they do this. When we sign our players, they have to give half a day in which they will go to those clubs and work with the kids. Because we found out that the parents cannot control the kids, the teachers cannot tell them what to do, but the players can. They are the role models. You have some game you are playing before training. Before training starts, normally you have some little game you are playing, like a, like a joke, you know, to joke. So you know. Fifteen years ago, we established this project, Mifalot Chinuch of Apoel Tel Aviv. And the idea behind it was that we would try to implement the dream of almost every kid to become a star. We know that most of them would not become stars. But we say, let's utilize it to enhance them and make them better citizens, better human beings, happier human beings. You know, they have something here, when you turn like 12 or 13, it's very important for them. So for the kid here, when you turn 12 or 13, they call it Bar Mitzvah, yeah? So I think one, one of these today is coming to do that. It's very important to them. And we need to join, you know? The player need to join to make the kids happy, you know? Very important. Yes, I said that already. Ma, ma, ma. We have uh, the Know Your Neighbors project, uh, which the idea is to, uh, to connect between Jewish Israelis and Arab Israelis. We are bringing them together. They meet each other. We'll bus you. Many of those kids are coming from places that they've never been to Tel Aviv. We will bring them over for a day of fun, including a game and we'll give them prizes, get them on the pitch. Apoel Tel Aviv is a group which has a lot of positive, progressive influence on young people. Therefore, I think it is very, very important, a not only sportive issue and sportive uh, phenomena, but also cultural and political. I think that when, when you work with children and not with uh, politicians, you can make the biggest changes, starting from the bottom. And uh, by knowing each other by name and uh, uh, by speaking about what you are doing in your daily schedule and uh, by playing football together and, uh, and laughing together and doing things together, then those children are going back home to their families and their neighborhoods and their schools and they say, OK, I, I know one Israeli, one Jewish person that is he's nice. He's nice, he's not that bad, I can, I can speak to him, I play football with him, we left together, we, we are friends. This is the part of education that is better than any explanation, wording, writing, whatever. This is feeling. With us, this is the nature of the club. This is, uh, you know, after, after training, you know, after this we're a little bit tired, but it's, it's important. And I enjoy doing that for them. So. At the beginning, many of our players see it as, as a burden. They like it, but they don't like the fact that it's a routine, that they have to, to give so much time. But when you speak to them after a year or two, after they've been doing it, all of them are saying that those are, in many cases, the most remarkable hours that they had in their service in the club. In that age of 40 years old, I think I will be in my country. Maybe to try to be a coach in Cameroon. Maybe academy. But I can see myself like a, a younger coach, you know. To try to learn to the youngest how to, you know, to give a pass, how to play football, how to come back to the position, how to behave in the pitch, how to behave with the referee, because it's very important. 
I prefer that than to be a coach. Because I'm very, very close with the kids. I like it. I like when they are, when they are happy, when I can see happiness on their face. Mm -hmm.